Dinosaur mummies are cool as heck, and there's actually quite a few of them, and there's been a lot of debate about how exactly they actually form. And a lot of this has actually been really useful because it helps give us somewhat of a better idea into how dinosaurs would have looked, evolved, and interacted with their environment. But that still leaves the question, how exactly did they form? Well, one of these, the Dakota specimen of Edmontosaurus coming from South Dakota, has actually been really, really useful for understanding this. Now, I was actually fortunate enough to be at the online session of Society of Vertebrate Paleontology last year, where the lead author actually started to present some of this information and get some feedback on it. And this is just the paper that describes what she talked about in that talk. And with that in mind, there's also some images from that talk that I'm not going to be using. Because in order to understand what happens to a body after it dies, that means sometimes you have to look at modern day dead bodies. And so there was actually a lot of forensic papers that were actually used in this to compare to the fossil record and understand how this Edmontosaurus may have actually formed and gotten preserved this way. Specifically, the forensic papers that were looked at used bodies that were donated to science and placed in a forest near a river. And this is a pretty similar environment to what we think Dakota actually would have died in. The Hell Creek Formation was a lot of fluvial and deltaic environments that would have been emptying into a small inland sea at that time during the latest part of the Cretaceous. And I'll get back to the forensic papers and how they relate to this, because Dakota first shows some things that we didn't really expect, because it's generally been assumed that in order to get this kind of preservation, you need to bury the animal really fast and really quickly right after it dies. And the thing is that Dakota actually shows some evidence that that's not the case. The most obvious part of this is the fact that there's bite marks, and this would have been bite marks from something scavenging, specifically a crocodilian. And so that's really good evidence that no, this animal wasn't actually just buried really quickly. Instead, it's far more likely that it died, laid at the surface for a bit, and a crocodilian wandered up and ate some of it. But that's also really important when we're looking at some of these forensic papers. For forensics, you want to understand how long ago the person died, and that means understanding how different decay processes actually happen. And what those papers found is that there would be scavengers feeding on these bodies, those would open up holes in the skin, and then flies and other insects would lay their larvae inside of those holes. Those would then eat the meat, but not the skin, which is really important when we're considering these mummies. And in fact, the area around these crocodilian bite marks is deflated. Essentially, there wasn't the muscle tissue underneath it that actually got preserved. And so what we're finding in the Dakota specimen actually lines up really nicely with what we find in these forensic studies. And that's actually really unique because it does make a lot of sense when we consider that we do actually have a decent number of dinosaur mummies, or at least some patches of skin preserved, especially out of the Hell Creek Formation where it's pretty common, at least relative to other formations. And this largely comes down to the fact that because of Dakota, we can now say that dinosaur mummies don't need as specific of conditions to actually form. It was, again, previously thought that we needed to bury them really quickly, and it was very specific conditions that would allow for this kind of preservation. But that's really not what we're finding. Instead, it seems like the body actually may have been out of the surface for weeks to potentially even months, and then buried really slowly. There's actually some sediment diagrams that show this, and they show how a lot of the sediments above, below, and on the layer Dakota were found in are pretty similar. The Dakota layer does have a little bit more clay and silt, and less pebbles and gravels, but it's a pretty minor difference. So what this means is that it was a pretty consistent environment that wasn't just one seasonal massive flood that buried this fossil. Instead of having a very specific set of sequences that needed to occur for it, it just had a scavenger biting on the fossil, and then insects coming in and eating the flesh, but not importantly the skin. That would then tie the skin or have it at least shrink wrapped a little more onto the bones where it could be closer preserved by the chemicals in those bones. And then finally, even just gradual burial can help preserve a lot of this skin. And this left us with what we have in Dakota, one of the best preserved mummified dinosaurs. And there's going to be a lot more research on this animal because it is so well preserved. There is a hint at some of the papers that are going to be looking at some of its feet earlier, and that's because the leaked photo showed that it almost had a hoof-like structure at the end of its foot. It still would have had those three separate toes, but they were all encased in kind of a mitten of skin and meat and flesh. And that's really cool to know how these animals may have actually been interacting with their environment that way. And the thing is, there's still more of this animal that's not fully prepped yet. And so hopefully we'll actually start looking and getting more of that prepped so we can try and get a better understanding of what exactly was happening with this Edmontosaurus mummy. Because now we know how it formed, but we still don't know necessarily a ton about how it lived.